Yellowstone earthquakes have revealed to us that there is a volcanic system six times bigger than what geologists believe was there. This is by the conversation by PhD researcher in volcanology, Robin Wiley. Seismologists discovered a massive magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone supervolcano in Wyoming that suggests its volcanic system could be more than 5.6 times bigger, larger than was previously thought. Although it was already known that Yellowstone has had one magma reservoir located about three to 10 miles below the surface, the new study published in Science reveals another much larger reservoir sitting directly below the first, located about 20 to 50 kilometers or 12 to 30 miles below the surface. And this reservoir is thought to have a volume of around 46,000 cubic kilometers compared to a volume of 10,000 cubic kilometers for the shallow reservoir. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. So it's over four and a half times bigger than the shallow reservoir. To make their discovery, scientists analyzed the vibrations made by earthquakes that passed under the volcano. The technique only sheds light on this volcano's potentially life-threatening eruptions, but it could also help us understand other volcanoes such as the Calbuco, which is now basically erupting in Chile. Now, Yellowstone volcano is composed of an immense volcanic crater known as the caldera. It's more than 44 miles in length, most of which lies within Yellowstone National Park. And we have the Yellowstone Lake lying on about a quarter of that. Now, the volcano rarely erupts lava. It did this so last, last time it did erupt lava was 70,000 years ago. But the magma lying under the surface gives rise to spectacular geothermal features such as geysers and colorful hot springs. We know that uh, Yellowstone is one of the 20 some odd super volcanoes of the earth. It has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas and over 60% of the world's geysers are located at Yellowstone. The last large eruption at Yellowstone was 640,000 years ago. It ejected about 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of volcanic material. This cataclysm created the Yellowstone caldera. So to get an idea of the scale, the largest eruption in recorded history, Mount Tabora in 1815, erupted about one-sixth of that. Magma reservoirs are thought to occur beneath most volcanoes and play a crucial role in the dynamics of volcanic eruptions, but they are too deep and conditions within them are too extreme to be measured directly. So volcanologists have to infer information about them using other means, such as earthquakes. That's how they measure seismic waves. These waves travel more slowly when they pass through molten rock, and accordingly, the group were able to use the velocities of the earthquake waves to infer the presence of large deep zone of partially molten material. Then they had the carbon footprint explained. The magma stored in the deep reservoir probably does not cause eruptions at Yellowstone directly. Instead, it acts like a feeder for the smaller, shallower reservoir, which is ultimately the source of the volcano's catastrophic eruptions. Scientists suspected the existence of a second magma reservoir at Yellowstone for some time now, but this new evidence is among the strongest support for the theory up to now. The discovery of the second magma reservoir may also help explain the huge amount of carbon dioxide gas that is being emitted from this volcano. Yellowstone's output is about 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every single day. 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every day coming out of Yellowstone. And the geologists believe that it was too high to be explained by a single magma reservoir. According to the study authors, the presence of the new reservoir is enough to account for the volcano's CO2 flux of 45,000 tons every single day. Now, if the high-resolution seismic imaging technique used in the study 
could be repeated to other volcanoes whose deep structure is poorly understood, such as Calbuco in Chile and others, volcanologists might eventually be able to understand how such eruptions take place. The first stirrings of volcanic eruptions happened far below. They do happen far below the surface. And if researchers can emulate the findings at Yellowstone at other volcanoes, it can only tell us more about the risks they pose. So in order to, of course, warn people that uh, there may be an eruption coming. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.